Give the Lord a shout. Hallelujah. Welcome your neighbor. Tell them congratulations on this new year. Hallelujah. Our hymn today is to God be the glory. Great things he has done. Hallelujah. Great things he has done for us and greater things he will do in Jesus mighty name. To God be the glory, great things He has done, so lovely the world that He gave us His Son. Psalms, 
the book of Psalms, Psalms chapter 126. Psalms chapter 126, verses 1 to 6. Give us all 30 seconds to find it. If you're there already, shout hallelujah. That hallelujah is standing on one leg. If you're there, shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. And I read, and it says, When the Lord brought back the captivity of Zion, we were like those who dream. Then our mouth was filled with laughter, and our tongue with singing. And they said among the nations, The Lord has done great things for them. The Lord has done great things for us, and we are glad. Verse 4. Bring back our captivity, O Lord, as the streams in the south. Those who sow in tears shall reap in joy. Verse 6, the last verse. He who continuously goes forth weeping, bearing seed for sowing, shall doubtless come again with rejoicing, bringing his sheaves with him. May the Lord bless the reading of his word this morning. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. It's testimony time. Amen. Amen. It's testimony time. Amen. Please, today we don't want a long story. Amen. Amen. Because we have a lot of, lot of, lot of stuff to do. Amen. Amen. So the first person I'm going to call on uh, is Sister Mukoli. Put your hands together. Amen. <laughs> so we're going <laughs> Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I just want to thank God. Sister for... Uncle Lee Husband, please join her. Praise God. Hallelujah. I just want to thank I just want to thank God for his mercies. Thank God for his grace. Thank God for finding the worthy to favor this past week. Uh, my testimony is long, but I'm going to make it brief. My, the big testimony is coming. <laughs> okay, I thank God for giving me favor in my place of work. Amen. Firstly, when I joined uh, my place of work, I didn't know anybody. In fact, when I went for an interview, we were so many that they asked me, who do you know? I said, I don't know anybody. So it happened that I was a little bit scared. I was a little bit scared because the people that came to the interview, all of them had work, uh, work experience in Canada. And I, have, I, didn't, I haven't worked in Canada for one day. So they asked me if I've worked. I said, no, I've not worked anywhere. That this is the first job I'm applying for. OK, the first place, if I'm employed, this is the first place I will work for. Because I've, I've, I got an, a, a, uh, an offer somewhere, but I declined. So they said okay, and the, the the interview was brief, so brief, less than less than 15 minutes. I go home. I told my husband, hmm, I don't think I, I I get this place, but it's okay. So eventually they called me back, and I realized that the people I was with there that had experiences more than five years, ten years experience, they didn't call them. They kept calling me. They call. I said yes, they called me. So fast forward to, to now, I. God has been breaking protocols on, for me in that place. God has been finding, God has been changing, changing a lot of things for my sake in that place. So I give God all the thanks. Amen. The big testimony is coming. Amen. Praise the Lord. Don't worry, part two. You hear the part two. Amen. Amen. Sister Norma, put your hands together as she calls forward. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I want to give God thanks this morning <clears throat> to be in the house another day <clears throat> with my family. I just want to give him thanks for the 10 years, but I'm here for five. I want to give him thanks for all that he has done for me during that time here and for my family. Um, for the, I was sick 
I was down for a while and um, the devil is just fighting here, here and everywhere. But my faith was just, just going down low at this time. I thought this time he would have had me. But for God's grace and, for, and mercy and for the prayers of Mount Zion and my life today again. I just want to give him thanks, Lord, today for saying, um, for his wonderful and miraculous healing this last, this last part. Because, you know, after I leave that Sunday from the, I could in short, Pastor, um, from Mama, from the anniversary that we had here, on the Monday, <clears throat> I was on my way, I was home. I just feel like something hit me. And... This sharp pain came from nowhere, just up on this side. And I said, Lord, what is this? But to cut long story short, I was in so much pain, so much pain, and didn't come to church then. But my my mother and my father hear my cry and run to my race with that Sunday because they visit me at home. Which I, I felt like a child who, who wanted to see their mom that Sunday and their dad. And God just sent them right in time for me because I was there in so much pain that my husband didn't know what to do. You know, when you say, we're hurt, you don't have to call, you don't have anything and I keep telling him what happened. And he sat there looking right through the night, I couldn't sleep. And I was just marching up and down, up and down. And, and he said, no ma, come. And he said, kiddo, come, lie here and put this heat on it. And I said, let me do it. And I agreed it wasn't working. But the Lord remind me that there was an healer there. You know, that, that brought you just heal. And I got up and I took my mantle or my kerchief that mama gave it to me. I had two, but I used that one. And I put it on my head. And I said, Lord, I know you're here, but this is what I got at my church, Mount Zion. And I put it on my head. And children of God, I lied down. And my husband was there looking at me. And I didn't know when the pain, I didn't know when I fall asleep. That my husband wake me and say, you sleep right through the night, what happened? And he said to me, my husband, he said, from you put that handkerchief on your head, I don't hear no groaning. I said, thank you, Jesus. My husband is a man that if I pray is a problem. If, if, if I sing is a problem. But during that week, he said, mm -hmm, the God you serve in, or the God you go to church for. I said, don't go to church for God. I praise and I worship my God. You know, and I say to him, if you, your God, is not real, come and serve mine. Yes. Yeah, come and try mine. If the God that you are serving doesn't do anything for you, step over, try mine, because he's alive and well. I just want to give God thanks for, for my daughter, for my family, for the prayers from Mount Zion. And once again, if you're God that you serve, not doing anything for you, try Mount Zion, God. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Try Mount Zion God. Amen. 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 If your God doesn't do anything for you, try what? Mount Zion. Try Mount Zion God. That God is a healer. Amen. It's a deliverer. Amen. It's a just in time God. Amen. Amen. The God that breaks protocol. <laughs> Amen. Sister Sikia, please come. Where is she? Amen. Put your hands together now. Hallelujah. Amen. Um, I just want to thank God on behalf of my brother. I want to thank him for giving him a job. Since he graduated, he's been looking for like a job in his field. I just want to thank God for that. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 There's one testimony. I'm, I'm, the person is taking it for granted, but I, I will call the person now to give the testimony. Amen. Amen. She called me, and I want to say this to everybody. Telling me about what God has done does not stop you from thanking God in the house of God. Amen. Amen. 
So if you want me to listen to your testimony, just know that you will come to the church to testify before the saints. Because your testimony will encourage somebody. True or false? Your testimony will encourage somebody. So just giving me your testimony and, and, you say, and you say, that's it, I'm not going to listen to your testimony. But neither will Pastor do. So I want to call on Sister Ahmed to give her testimony by fire, by force. Of what God did for your sister. You see, she took it for granted. God forgive me, actually, just to give for granted. Um, since my dad, my mom, and my sister passed away, like, all the time I've been praying for my sibling. So my dad, uh, sister, um, yeah, we, live, we live in Lagos. Lagos is just, like, from here to maybe Niagara for, no, like, from here to maybe BC. And my dad's sister in Bini, now said, my sister in Lagos to bring sand from the beach to her in Benin. That's like traveling from Toronto to BC. So my sister called me and I said, why will you do that? I said, number one, we don't use sand. What kind of church is she going to? That she should not try it. So I told my mom, my mom said, don't try that. Like that is dead. But to God be the glory, they didn't go. And my brother, you know, that is my younger sister, Osman, was not admitted in the hospital, was very sick. So to call the story short, last Monday on the prayer line, we pray, my mom said the prayer. And that Monday evening, or Tuesday morning, they now called me that that same auntie was coming to Lagos. He didn't tell anyone that she's coming to Lagos. Normally she would tell them that she's coming so that they'll prepare. She didn't tell anybody. But as God would do it, she went to my other auntie's house right to take something i don't know what she wanted to take then she fell down uh, by the stairways her skin was torn and the doctor said it was god that saved her that she would have just died so to god be the glory because i don't know what she was preparing to go and meet my youngest ones at home and i just thank god that god delivered my youngest one and i give god the glory and apart from that i also want to thank my life since i since i came back to the church God has been doing so miracles in my life and my job. I just want to say glory be to God. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. The reason I said she should give the test, she called me within the week and told me. Her younger sister just had a baby. The first thing you will do is to call them to say, oh, I'm coming to do a mugwa. Those of you that know a mugwa. But she didn't tell anybody she was coming to Lagos. She packaged herself, <coughs> prepared herself to go do something over there. But the God that we serve pushed her from the step. And she fell. Lagos, she did not go. Baby, save. Mother, save. Father, save. Praise the Lord. Amen. Who is that man that said? when God has not commanded him to say? Who is that man that has concluded your matter when God has not said, go ahead? God will scatter their plans in the name of Jesus Christ. Let us stand to our feet. Testifiers, stand to your feet and pastor will pray for us. Amen. Father, we thank you in the name of Jesus Christ. We give you glory for the wonderful works you have done again. Because Quiet. you are the God of wonders. That is why your name is wonderful. May the life of your children always be filled with wonders. In Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Are you excited to be in the presence of God? Yes. Well, 
Welcome your neighbor, tell them you are blessed, you are highly favored. Hallelujah. Our song today is Light of Rain.
be presenting um, a song that we decided to practice today. <laughs> Can I ask the, uh, the youth to make their way to the back, please? Mount Zion youth, please make your way to the back, please. You are
Congratulations. Can we render another clap off from off the wall? Many people think it's easy to come up there to sing. It's really, it's really not. Believe me, it's not. So we thank, we thank the Lord for what He is doing in their lives. At this time, I would like to call upon the youth, the youth of Mount Zion. They have a play that they would like to present. The youth of Mount Zion. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, church. On behalf of the youth, on behalf of the youth, we're going to be having a presentation, a drama, and it's titled "Let's Get the Spirit." As you watch, may the Lord bless you all in Jesus' name. Shafi, what's up? Girl, you know, the money is talking, eh? See, as a CEO, you know, I have to just secure the bag, that's it. Please, that's very important. You know, this 2019. Yeah, what's going on with you? I just got my second kid. Wow, oh my God. Girl, you're balling, eh? Yeah, so I'm thinking of, you know, my one of the airports, you know, something. Girl, you gotta go for it. You know, it's all about securing the bag, okay? Sure. All right, let's go. Let's go yeah, to the we'll talk about this later. Sorry. Uh -uh. Hello? Shadi. Which of them? 
No, I can't meet you today. I have to next to next month. Next month I'll call I'll call you. I'll, I'm currently in church right now, eh? Yes, yes, yes. See all these stupid girls. Can you imagine? You say you're in church, guy. Guy, yeah, these girls are too much. I can't be disturbing myself. My life is I can't multiply myself. I'm only one. I can't find girl. I can't find girl. I don't even know what to do to myself. Sometimes people look at me and feel like I don't have issues. But the truth about this is, do I really have a problem? Yes. I know I serve God. And let me take a step, actually. As a Christian, what do I desire in life? I desire all the good things in life. Don't I want to be rich? I want to be rich. I want to go to school. I want to make money. I want to have pain. Yes. But as a Christian, all I just need to do right now is just trust God. And I know that he will send me true. I will not deny who I am. I will let my light shine so that all can see. That's exactly what I will do. I will be who I am in Christ. Thank you. I don't know what to do now. This African mother of mine, she said I should not call her. Is it because I don't have husband? Is husband, I have degrees, you know, like only me. Shabby, what's going on? Okay, I'm okay, you know. I'm, 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 not, okay. I'm not happy. Uh, what's going on? Uh, it's not only me that has problem. Or what is it? You only say one or two. It's not my mother is budging you. My mother said I should not call her. Oh, my friends. Oh, let's go hang out there. Like, I need to take my daughter to the daycare. Who cares yes, about your care. problem right now, eh? Compared to mine, it's small. So it's what's going even on with now? all the money I have, I'm not happy. Ha, I don't have peace of mind. Billionaire like you? I don't know. Like hey. I'm a career woman and I'm, not, I'm still not happy. I put money aside all things. Money is not So money can't buy me happiness. Even with all the degrees, like, do you know me like you? We don't Even have it is thing. going to countries. I don't know. What's going on? I, I don't know. Let's you see. We don't my, my, one of my friends talked about one pastor. But me, I don't, I don't really trust all these pastors. I will pay them salary. Pastor. You know? What can pastors do? See, let me just dance. Pastor doesn't really have my problem, no? <laughs> Who I be? Biggie, who I be? Biggie, who I be? Biggie, yes, who I be? Biggie, yeah, not again, not again. Biggie, who I be? Biggie, oh, yeah, sit down. Oh, yeah, guy, I want to hear something real quick. I think this night to me, they chase me, and I did run. Yeah, and I saw you run. So I know, say I did run. You I they won. Because I guess kills I they always are smart then. You understand? But yeah, I think they fear me. I the reason say maybe one day they wasn't catch me. But they don't catch me. But they fear oh uh, no fear anybody. If anybody I go kill. I go kill. I go I go I I okay, just one more time. Yeah, making who I be biggie. Who I be? Biggie! Who I be? Biggie! Yeah, my head on this one. Who I biggie? One more time. Biggie! <laughs> Hey, honey. I'm good. I have a big problem. Tell me about it. So, my problem is that after all the two million followers that I have, majority of them all males, obviously, um, not even one. I can't even call one my own. Like, it's, it's disturbing me. Out of all the men that come into my DM, my messenger, they're all like, 5.5, you know, short men who have like some beefy, can't even walk straight, don't even do anything that can, you know, satisfy me. And it's, it's just bothering me. After all the followers that I have, I can't even call one my own. Fine girl, like you, that they're supposed to be lying, you know. They're all ugly, you know. I'm looking for somebody who's like six feet tall, big arms, big muscles, you know. Somebody that when I'm walking down the street, people are like, who's this guy, you know, who's this guy? This guy's so sweet. But all these guys that are coming into my DM are all like short men. <laughs> short, you know, short men that I can't do anything with. Maybe your steak's too much. Well, 
I can't, you know, like there's nothing I can do about it. He needs to be a sweet. He needs to be a sweeter man. He needs to be sweet. And he's very tall, you know. So any girl comes around, they know that this man is my man. But it's unfortunate that nobody, nobody, like not even one out of two million people. Have you tried going to church? <laughs> Did you say church? Yeah. Girls these days go church. to church to find a church. I'll go to church to find a man. No, no, no. I'll go to a club. A club is where I can find a six feet tall man who's nice. He's always, you know, doing whatever he has to do. What am I going to do in church? What is church? Oh, they are, they're too holy, holy. I can't deal with holy, holy people. Too much prayers. Monday to Friday, they're, Sunday they're in church. Thursday they're praying until Friday is all, you know, Saturday and Sunday. Like, why? I don't need that. Or maybe you need to live for I, <laughs> I need to bleed. Find out like me, I need to live for you are crazy. But you can just try for him to church next. Okay, so. No, 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 no. Okay. No, I have to go. I'm sorry, I gotta go. Pizza for what? Will you move? Can you imagine? All these human. Which one are you? Let me see. Which of the mothers? Well, <laughs> um, how are you, man? How are you? Life is treating me very badly, man. All this. It is well. It's okay. Unfortunately. <laughs> you know, this life I'm living, I don't like it at all. I don't like it at all. I don't like it at all. <laughs> Which of your mother? See, let, let's go, let's go, let's go. Huh? I need Jesus. I need Jesus. Do you have Jesus? Oh, my God. So here I am today. I don't even know what to do to myself. Hey, Jesus. I basically have just one week for me to find this money, or else I'm done. Hey, where do I start? One week, I'll lose my job. If I don't pay this fee, bad credit, bad record. Hey, what do I do? God have mercy. And I'm a Christian, oh, what would they say? Hey, that I serve God, that I go to church, the world will mock me. I don't know what to do. But the Bible says, those that put their trust in God shall not be put to shame. Because I have Christ, I know He will make your way. I will only trust God. I don't know how He's going to do it, but I know He's going to do it. You know what? Let me go and pray. I need to pray right now. God has to help me. This is not going to happen to me. I can never be put to shame. Yes. So, this is the light of mine. I'm going to let you shine. This is light of mine. I'm going to let you This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine, let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. Mine, I'm going to let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine, let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Let it shine. Oh God, give me the grace of windsor to your kingdom. Hey brother, how are you? Fine. Oh, you look so dull. Is everything okay? Depression. Depression? <laughs> Why? This. Is that not so soft? Children are the heritage of God. What is wrong? Not this one. This one is not the head. Why are you kicking me now? <laughs> no, it's a lovely boy. Go, go, go and sit down somewhere. It's a lovely boy. Don't no worry. You'll be a son of God. I just want to share the word of God with you. Would that be okay? Thank you. So when you come to God, God will take away your depression, okay? Mm. You're blessed. I have many. You have many? But try this one. Try my Zion. Okay? God bless you. This, this light of mine. I'm going to let you shine. Yes. Hello, beautiful sisters. How are you? Hello. I'm good. You guys are looking so beautiful. Oh, thank you. I'll let you share the word of God with you. Would that be okay? We, is there a degree after that? 
Do you need a job? I can take a job. Yeah, I can recommend schools for you. Yeah, I have two PhDs. Too. Do you have a PhD? Oh, that is so nice. I like your offers, but I think you can do But I have a degree, okay? I have a PhD. Oh, you have a degree. Yeah, I'm a medical doctor. Oh, you're a doctor! Girl, okay! All right. So, I would like to take much of your time. I just want to share the word of God with you and some clients. Will you give me your husband? My mother said I should not call out. Let me tell you, God is your husband. Once you come to God in Mount Zion, God will arrange everything for you. Try it. Please, your mother is still talking to you. I want my own mother. Oh, yes. Thank you. God bless you. Thank you so much. Hey, sister, how are you? This is the light of mine. I love the light to shine. Let it shine. Ah, sister, how are you? Yes, I saw you too. Why is everything? Oh, yeah. Hope you're coming to church. Well. So I'm going to church now. Praise God. Thank you. 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 I'm going to let it shine, let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Father, thank you for your work. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Somebody shout hallelujah. Yeah. 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 Somebody yeah. shout hallelujah. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Praise God. Hallelujah. I want to thank you all for coming to tonight's or this morning's service. It is called God Can Turn Your Situation Around. Amen? Amen? Amen. Amen. God can turn your situation around. Amen. Listen, I don't know what brought you into the house of the Lord tonight, but I can give you this promise and guarantee that before you leave church today, God is going to do a new work in your life. Amen? Amen. Somebody give me a hallelujah. hallelujah. Someone give me a hallelujah. hallelujah. This pastor is so sweet. <laughs> I thought I heard something there. You didn't hear it? Okay. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. At this time, I, I would like to make a call, an altar call. For those of you who are weary, those of you who are, who are heavy in heart, those of you that want to surrender all your burdens to Jesus, I would like to give out a call. If you'd like to give your life to Jesus Christ, I want you to make your way to the frontier. Young man, you'd like to give your life to the Lord? Is this man your father? No. No? It's okay. Jesus will be your, your father. Is there anyone else that wants to give their life to the Lord? God bless you, sister. Is there anyone else? You can make your way over here. I'm receiving an impression in my spirit that there's still some among you who need to surrender their life to the Lord. Sorry, sir, what's your name? What's my name? Sir, what's your name? What's my name? What's your name? Biggie. 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 It's a question for you. Is that what's written on your government birth certificate? What is your real name, young man? You're in the house of the Lord. What is your real name? Yeah, just speaking my name. God bless you. 
Let's bow our heads down in a quick prayer. You will repeat after me. Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus. Open your mouth. Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus. I come before you today. I come before you today. I leave all my burdens before the cross. I leave all my burdens before the cross. Father, as I have come before you today, I ask that you will take me as I am. Give me a new heart and let me follow after your ways. I now declare Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. In Jesus' name we pray. Now, if you said that prayer tonight, I can give you the guarantee and promise that your names are written in the Lamb's Book of Life. It doesn't matter if you have 200 Instagram followers. It doesn't matter if people are chanting, chanting your name, Biggie, Biggie, Biggie. It doesn't matter if you have seven PhDs. It doesn't matter if your mother doesn't talk to you. I promise you this. Can you be my husband? I promise you this. I promise you this. But because you have made your way to Mount Zion Chapel, because your feet has stepped on this fertile ground, God is going to turn every situation around. Amen. So, Pastor, is there men in the church? Listen, young girl, you need to repent. You need to surrender your life properly to the Lord. Okay? Thank you very much. You need to repent. We're in the house of the Lord, okay? Pastor, you're fine. Repent. You need Jesus. You need Jesus. So, have peace of mind. You have peace of mind. Are you sure? I promise you. Even you, even you, even you today, you'll find out who your father is. Look at me, young man. I am your father. I am your father. Today, look at me. You will call me daddy. Okay? Look at me. Today, you'll call me daddy. You're my son in the Lord. That's what I mean. Okay? God bless you. And for all of you who have come here tonight, I promise you God will do a work in your lives. Amen. God bless you. The wonderful thing is that today is actually the 10th anniversary of this church, of it opening. So it's, it's only right that God begins with us today. Amen? Amen. May God bless you all and keep you. And I pray for you. Should I pray for you or all your 200 followers? Two million. Heavenly Father, I pray today and I commend this young lady into your hands. She came into the house of the Lord looking for a man. Even set her eyes on me, looking for me. But Father, today I pray and I deliver her from that demon of Instagram. I set her free from that demon of Snapchat. Father, we turn every situation around by fire and by force. Let only your will be done today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Anyone else? Biggie. Come forward. Come forward. Come forward. God bless you. That's it. God bless you. Okay? He'll deliver you from Biggie-itis. Okay? God bless you. God bless you all for coming to church. God bless you all. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Let's render a bigger clap offering onto the youth from the playlist that they just did. We can do a lot better to that. A bigger clap offering onto the
the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And as I have said, or as I said in the play, because your feet is here in Mount Zion Chapel, celebrating the 10th anniversary of this amazing church, God will turn every situation in your life around. Amen? Amen. 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 At this time, I would like to call upon the pre-teens to come forward with their presentation. The pre-teens of Mount Zion, if you can make your way out for your presentation. Once again, we're calling the pre-teens. If you can please make your way out.
have shown.
Jesus Christ. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. I want to say thank you to the children. They pretend the which is the group for I mean uh, and they told us the first group that came. Praise the Lord. It's not an easy thing to stand before congregation. It's not easy. We thank God for their lives. We thank God for the youth. For that playlist, I pray to not stand against you in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. Let us pray. Precious Father, we thank you. We give you glory for a moment like this. Today is a day of celebration. Lord, the church turned 10 years on Friday. We are here today to tell you thank you for your marvelous deeds. The devil is already ashamed because he tried against the church several times and he failed. He made several attempts against our own lives. He lost. Never again will he succeed in our lives. Amen. Never again will he succeed in the church. Amen. Thank you, King of Glory, for in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. I promise I'm not taking long sermon, very short, so that we will to round up on time. Mount Zion as a church, different churches, different names. Even the redeemed. The redeemed Christian Church of God, you have different names House of Praise, Covenant Chapel, Chapel of Glory, 
Remember. And this one is called Mount Zion Chapel. And if I ask what do we know about that name, Mount Zion Chapel, only one area our mind will go to, and that is deliverance. It's much more than that. Mount Zion in the Bible days was the city of the great king, King David. And so for you being here, some of us don't know, all that we may know is that we are going to church, and that church is Mount Zion. Just as Sister Norma rightly said, she said, if your God cannot do it, try the God of Mount Zion. She wasn't joking. She wasn't saying it just to camouflage. She said it based on the experience she has had. I don't know if you've had that experience. And that is why some of us will come to church. We've been here for several years. It looks as if nothing is happening in our lives. It's based on divine connection. Praise the Lord. As I said, I'm not going to take a long sermon, but very brief. Isaiah chapter 8, verse 18. Isaiah chapter 8, verse 18. Prophet Isaiah did say, that, Behold, I and the children whom the Lord had given me are for signs and for wonders. I and the children that the Lord has given me are for signs and for wonders. The signs and wonders are in Israel. And the signs and wonders come from where? From the Lord of hosts. And where can you find the Lord of hosts? Which dwelleth? in Mount Zion. So, if for example you, you are going to the United States of America for the purpose to see Donald Trump, where do you think you need to go to? You go to New York? Washington DC. You just keep is where? The White House. Washington DC is a big place. But there is a specific place you can meet him. If no matter the, the state he was before he became president, maybe he becomes president, he moves to where? To the White House. You want to have a meeting with him? He's there. You will see him. Oh, you go to that country, the giant of Africa. And you say you want to see the head of the Katoria Hesmen. Are you going to Kaduna? You go to Sokoto, Bauchi, or Imo State. Where will you find him? Where in Abuja? Asura, that's where the cattle herdsman is. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Somebody say, ha -ha. Is it not the head of the cattle herdsman? You didn't know? He is. He's their president. I'm not joking. I'm telling you the reality. I'm telling you the reality. Is their president. So if you want to see God, you go to Mount Zion. You don't need to go to Governor Chapel. You don't need to go to House of Praise. You don't need to go to Chapel of Glory. If somebody asks you, have you ever seen God? How do I see him? Where? 
say he is in Mount Zion. I'm not saying God is not doing with wonders from there in other churches. Based on biblical principle, the Lord of hosts that dwelleth in Mount Zion. So when you come, whom are you coming to meet? So it is much more than just coming and said, I'm going to church. Ten years ago, while this church was about to come up, names were written down. What names will the church be called? Fasting and prayer were going on. And the Spirit of God picked Mount Zion. Everyone in that arena agreed with it that it is the Lord. Praise the Lord. So Isaiah says, I and they that the Lord has given me. In other words, you and I, which the Lord has given me as to live in this tabernacle. We are for signs and for wonders. There are signs and wonders from different places. There are churches that carry signs and wonders, of which some of those signs and wonders are not genuine. Some of us, you know much more than that. And as I say, signs and wonders in Israel from the Lord of hosts that dwells in Mount Zion. Say to yourself, say, Father, I am made for signs and wonders. So every one of us are instruments for signs and wonders. You want God to use you to perform signs and wonders? Very simple. The first thing is pray for that small headache that somebody complained to you or that seems to be troubling you. There are ministers that say, God, use me to perform miracle. I want to raise the dead. How can you raise the dead when you can't even pray for headache to go, you want to raise the dead. Another pastor here at the table, he said, I respect a deacon that can pray for the headache and the headache will go than an AP that cannot do anything but just going with title. Praise the name of the Lord. Obadiah chapter 1, verse 17 and 18. So Isaiah makes us to know that when you come to Mount Zion, be prepared to meet God. Because He alone is in Zion. Verse 17 first. But upon Mount Zion, shall be what? How many of us need deliverance in the house? The few that did not raise up their hand don't understand what deliverance is all about. The young thing, deliverance is for those who are possessed. If you are not possessed with demon, you are possessed with financial debt. Does that feel a great deliverance? If you don't have financial debt, month has just ended. We are getting to the end of another month. Some of us, it could be that you will not pay your rent right now. The rent for the month of everything you have not paid. Praise the Lord. 
The month of November is going. It could be that you have not paid. Does that fellow need deliverance? Irrespective that we have some scammers going around with different calls nowadays. But there are certain numbers that you know is for credit recovery team. You know that number very well, you don't pick it. And they call you with 1-800 to the extent that the representative will, will call you with his or her number without you knowing and you pick. That fellow needs deliverance. So it's not only the person that flies that needs deliverance. You are a CP24. Have you heard? You need deliverance. It's just for them to release the information. As long as, if I told they are not talking to you, you are just passing by and something flashes into your ears. Off it goes. You don't see anything on skirts. Even when dog put on skirts and blouse and goggles as it is in Canada, you still turn back to look. Is it a dog or is it a human being? That fellow needs deliverance. But upon Mount Zion shall be deliverance. And there, in the same Zion, there shall be holiness. You see why God dwells in Zion? Because God is a holy God. You want God to do something in your life. Holiness is of paramount importance. You can't do it without holiness. Even when you have the sermon of say God understand, you look at that saying and walk into it and say God understand, I will ask him for mercy. And you come to Zion, the life of that fellow will remain the same. Holiness. And the house of Jacob shall possess their possessions. So when you come to Mount Zion, the Lord gave you the enablement to possess your possession. In other words, to recover all that the enemy may have stolen from you before you arrive. But eventually you are here, you've lost a lot in the past years and you are just sitting down, <coughs> not thinking of recovery, you still have a lot to do. Holiness, they possess your possessions. What is recovering their possessions? They demote you from your place of God before you come. You have the grace in Mount Zion to recover your position back. When another woman snatch your husband from you before coming to a place like this, you have the grace to pray and recover your husband back. Possessing your possession. So when you are in Mount Zion, God expects you to possess your inheritance. That is why he is in Mount Zion, the place where he dwells. We should not just come to church for coming sake. So when I am coming to church, I am coming to meet the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. For deliverance, <coughs> for holiness, and to recover all my lost glory. But because you are here at this moment, and I pray that God will enable you to recover your lost glory. Amen. Verse 18 says, And the house of Jacob shall be a fire. So when you are in Mount Zion, God expects you to be a burning flame. 
Your life is supposed to be hot. I can take this cord, wrap it around my neck, my entire body. Though there is life, it looks as if there is no life in it. I can play with it. But I cannot be so bold to play with high tension well. Even this, when you remove this insulator and make the wire naked, I can't be bold to wrap my neck with it. And if somebody sees me doing it, they know it's a suicide mission. When your life is hot, the devil cannot make a mess of you. So the house of Jacob shall be fire. That's what the Bible says. The fire on my altar must not go out. How do you know a life that is not on fire? When they bring that palatable dish in your dream, you eat to your satisfaction and you wake up. There are certain dreams about your life that you wake up and you be, you be in a state of regret and say, what is all this? Where will this dream stop? It's an indication that your life is not on fire. Your life is not on fire by noise making. When your life is on fire, Anything that demands tablets will go out. Say the house of Jacob shall be fire. It won't be church. Because the Bible says in the book of Hebrews, I think chapter 12, verse, uh, the last verse of it, if I'm not mistaken, it said our God is a consuming fire. And the house of Joseph, a flame. The house of Jacob shall be a fire. The house of Jacob, I mean Joseph, a flame. Since you gave your life to Christ, since you've been coming to God, is your life on fire? There are people you see out there. They know you, but you don't know them. There are people in your workplace, they know you, but you don't know them. You tell them with your mind you are a Christian, but they know you are not. Because they know your works. When someone is on fire, when you see sin, you will run. Unlike a particular woman, the wife of a pastor, whom I know very well, and we say, may the Lord forgive me for what I want to say now. And when she opened her mouth, you will cover your ears. Even the little that gets into your ears, you regret, why did I allow this kind of words to enter my ears? She will beg for mercy. God forgive me for what I want to say now. And she will still say it. Those are some of us beg God for mercy to commit those acts. Lord, forgive me. Praise the name of the Lord. You may have been with us for a good 10 years. Sister Mensa, how long have you been here? I know you're one of the oldest, quiet and gentle and silent members. Seven years. You are not so sure, it's just estimates. Seven. Where is Tina? Where is Tina? 
Praise the Lord. So I believe Stanoma is five years. She is seven years. Alosa is ten years. Ten years of membership. Praise the Lord. So what am I saying? Whether you are six years, whether you are five years or one year, in Mount Zion, all the number of years in Christ is your life on fire. Are you a body flame? Let me give you an example of a bonnet flame. And I will mention the name without looking back. And I said, Brother Toy, one of the ministers, who was working in the company in the midst of other young guys like him. Don't ask me of their nationality. But they are of the same skin color like you. <coughs> And those guys want to commit something wrong. They want to steal in that same company. They arrange what they want to steal. And immediately he was coming. One of them said, don't let him know. If he knows, this plan is done. So they didn't disclose to him. And they would still go ahead. They stole from the place. They are workers in that place. After they have stolen and done away with the goods, before he knew, if he had known at that particular time, they would have, I mean, they would be unable to steal from that company. A bunny flame. Because he does not tolerate such sin. You don't go to your stove and play around it with paper, do you? A burning stove. It will get burnt. So our lives are supposed to consume every unwanted thing from the enemy. As a member of Mount Zion, they need to see you and say this person is different. Not to look at you and say, this is one of us. You can go ahead. <coughs> Number one, Mazar is a place where God dwells. It's a place for deliverance. Deliverance is what every one of us have to seek after day and night. There are some of us, as I'm looking at every one of us, that are running away from deliverance. I know them. They know they are spiritually loaded. Some of them are talking to them. Won't you cry out, let God deliver you? When I mean spiritually loaded, you know what I mean. They are fully loaded. Because of that, some of these people don't want to join workforce. They run away. Because you have to go through deliverance and they give it up. Lastly, Psalm 125, verse 1 and 2. Psalm 125, verse 1 and 2. They that trust in the Lord. shall be as Mount Zion. Why would they be as Mount Zion? Say, they that trust in God shall be like Mount Zion, which cannot be removed, but abided forever. As the mountains are round about Jerusalem, so the Lord is round about his people. 
from henceforth, even forever. When you know you are a member of Mount Zion, you will not be moved by the circumstances that come across your way. You will not be moved by any kind of winds that is blowing around you. I don't know if it is Friday or Thursday I mentioned to the brethren. At the time when the wind was blowing, one particular time in this church and the wind was blowing, somebody came and said, Pastor, you look so calm. I said, what happened? In spite of all that is going on, you are not disturbed. So why should I be disturbed? Can you swallow Tylenol for somebody's ass headache? It's not possible. Who has the church? Church be panicking. That some instruments of darkness are causing chaos in the church and will not be having heart attack. No. <laughs> I just go home and relax, eat and sleep. Fast if you want me to fast. Because he's the owner of the church. I remember when Pastor E. Adeboy said something, said when they put him on vacation and they said that you are 70 years old. But that's 60 or 70 years. You should go on a vacation, go and relax. And the church group of people shall put him on a cruise, which he has never been to. He said, just stay away. Go and rest for some time. And he entered the big ship, and the ship was going. All of a sudden, the storm came. And when the storm came, plates were flying in the air. So terrible. See, then the captain said to them, there are 12 categories of stone. He said, this is category 10. And he said to himself, category 10? What have I come here to do for God's sake? He knelt down and he prayed. He said, Lord, help me, have mercy. He said, the Lord said to him, I said, in the days of Peter, when there was stone, what did I do? Say you were sleeping. Say then go and sleep. Sleep? Say yes, go and sleep. He entered his cabin and lay down his left, but then he woke up. He stomp calm. While he was sleeping, the storm moved away to the different place entirely and caused great havoc in the part of Germany, from London down to Germany. And he was looking at the news, a disaster. So why should I be swallowing Tylenol? When some people are messing up in the church, I don't have time. So that is why I'm so calm. Because he dwelleth in Mount Zion. The early days of this church, a pastor in the dream came up and said, this church is too close to his parish. We have to move. We said, sir, to where? He said, to Aurelia. He said, to Aurelia. I went to Google and said, where, where is Aurelia? After Barry. See how wicked the heart of a man is. He said the church, I'm not about on that church, same redeem. He said it's too close to him. And I said to him, sir, they that trust in the Lord it shall be like Mount Zion that cannot be removed. I said, my son cannot be removed. He was looking at me. Only one person has authority to move it out. And who is that? The one that is dwelling. You go and tell uh, Donald Trump, move that White House from there. 
they will tell you that it's like this fellow suffering from psychosis. So when you trust in the Lord, you cannot be moved. I am not moved by what I see. I am not moved by what I hear. Hallelujah. I am not moved by what I see. Hallelujah. I'm only moved by the word of God. Hallelujah. Let me hear you say. America is a narrow road, 1,000 narrow road. In the department there, I was the last person they employed. They have a principle, they said, first to come, last to go. So last to come is the first to go. So if they employ me last, when they are laying off, they will lay me off before they lay off those who have spent five years, 10 years, 20 years. The reverse was the case. All of them were looking. Some would tell myself, what do you mean? Sorry, we are going to miss you. They said, miss me for what? They will stop there. The following day I'm at work, they are waiting to hear that David is leaving. The one that is 10 years laid off. And I've not spent two years as full time and I still remain. Every day people don't have work to do. They are waiting to hear. Anyone waiting to hear the news of your failure, God will disappoint them. Yeah. They'll be waiting to hear that David is laid off. Brethren, the work began so slow. I got to washroom seven to eight times a day. No diabetes. When I finish what they asked me to do, nothing. For them to see me standing, you tell the team leader, let me go to the washroom. He said, go, I will go there. I'm not going to pee, nothing. There's a bench there. I will just relax. For another 30 minutes, come back. The job began so slow. At the end, I was praying to God. I said, God, take me out of here. It's time. For God to answer the prayer was another problem. Now I want to go. I couldn't go. Until when the time came, nothing to do. Eight hours was like 24 hours in the job. The manager just called a group of people. He said, I'm sorry. It's not in my heart to let you go. You guys are great workers. But you can see no job. Nothing. 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 And really he just said that. One again lady just burst into tears. I was shocked. Why is he crying? Later I realized that maybe he, she bought a new car. Maybe she just bought a house. You know what people get full time, they'll begin to buy buy. Because they are very certain that the job is there. They will just be collecting all over the land. Those are the people that beg for her for time. They don't want to go home. She just began to cry. But for me, 
Before God and man, all lions will go to hell. I have no cause to cry. Number one, it was an opportunity for me. I plan to go back to my profession. I couldn't leave. I said, if I leave, how am I going to pay bills? My wife is nursing children at home. How am I going to cope with all that? So I couldn't leave. And I have to stay back. Immediately they said, now it's time to go. I said, God, thank you. Let me pursue my career. That one year, I entered my career. By the time that one year of AI expires, I'm not looking for a new job. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. You should not be moved by what you hear. A true son and daughter of Zion, don't be moved by what you see. If that person fails, doesn't mean that we fail. Ah, the kind that people fail anyhow. That is your own story. I will pass. Amen. Canada says they don't give paper to Nigerians anymore. That is your own opinion. I'm a different Nigerian. Not governed by Fulani Hesman, but by the Almighty God. Because those ones, they did not give paper. What they, they are carrying, what is going with them, is not what is going with me. Some of them are unbelievers. Some have HTV, home trouble. I don't have home trouble. So when I go there, he will go with me. Because the Bible says, that I, said, I will go before thee and make the crooked place straight. I will break in peace the gate of brass and cut his son at the bars of iron. Because he dwells in Zion. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Sermon is over. Just bow down your head. Hold on your hands. The 10th year anniversary of the church, you are not here by accident, you are here by divine arrangement. <coughs> you are in the place where God dwells. You are in the place when you are opportune to possess your possessions, what are you waiting for? You are in the place where you need to recover the lost glory. No matter what the enemy has done, and you are in Zion, is a place <laughs> where you are not moved. But those things that say they are not movable, you have the ability to move them out. Ask the Lord and say, God, visit me in this tenth year of the church. Upon Mount Zion there shall be deliverance. There shall be holiness. God said to Moses, when you build this tabernacle, put on it, on the signet, holiness unto the Lord. You can't avoid holiness. You can't rule out holiness as a believer. Holiness is to live right in the sight of God. Holiness is to see sin and run away. Holiness is to fear God. That what I am doing now, God is there. I don't want to do it. It's not right. Joseph ran when the woman approached him. Said, why should I do such a wicked thing against my God? Holiness. Holiness. Without which no man shall see the Lord. You want to see God. Not in your self-righteousness. Your self-righteousness is like a filthy rag. 
as the Bible described it in Isaiah, that our righteousness is like a piece of rag we used to rub the floor. And God expects us to put on ourselves the breastplate of righteousness of God. Wherever you go, that holiness needs to be displayed in your workplace, in your school, in your neighborhood. Let your light shine. Father, we thank you. We give you glory. We bless your name for this tenth year of the church. Father, by the reason of the tenth year of the church, visit your people. Amen. Deliver those that you need to deliver. Amen. Heal those that you need to heal. Amen. Bring salvation to us all. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Father, Isaiah says, I and they that the Lord has given me. We are made for signs and wonders. In Israel, in Canada, signs and wonders from the Lord of hosts that dwells in Mount Zion. Father, I and these ones you have given to me, we are made for signs and wonders, Lord. Let our life 